In this video, I want to talk about the homotopy extension property that we introduced in the previous video and how it relates to CW complexes. More precisely, I want to prove that if you have a CW complex X and a subcomplex A, this is a closed subcomplex, then this has the homotopy extension property. So a closed subcomplex, this just means a union of closed cells of X such that X is obtained by adding more cells to A. So we need to prove this theorem that a CW complex and a closed subcomplex has the homotopy extension property. So for the proof, I'm going to use the following very nice lemma, which says that if E is a disk, then um, there is a continuous map from E times 0, 1 to the following set. Well, let me draw a picture of what the map is and then I'll tell you what its image is. So here is E and here is the interval 0, 1. going vertically. The map I want is the thing that sends every point on this square to somewhere along this red set. And it's going to be just a projection map where you fix some point above this picture and you project linearly to this red boundary. So what is this red set? It's the boundary of E, which in this picture is just these two points, times the interval. Union E at time zero. All right, so the red bit of this picture is, is the red bit in the equation. And the proof is, is basically this picture. You project linearly from a point um, above. So in other words, if E is the set of points x in Rn such that length of x is less than or equal to 1, then you embed e times 0, 1 as a subset of Rn plus 1, and then you know in coordinates this point at the top that you project from could be uh, zero 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 two. Okay, so we're going to use this fact. Okay, so next lemma. Um, if X is a space obtained from A by attaching a single cell one k-dimensional cell uh, then um, x comma a has the homotopy extension property 
So what exactly did the homotopy extension property say? Let's review it in the proof. Here's a, I'm just going to draw it as a line. Here's x, uh, I'm just attaching one K cell called E to A. Uh, so I was given various pieces of data. So I was given a function. Um, F on this whole thing on A union E, so on X to some other space, and I was given a homotopy of that function. In other words, sorry, this is little h. In other words, um, so little h is a homotopy of f restricted to a in other words it's a map from a times 0 1 0 1 is this up direction in this picture and um, what I want to construct is a homotopy big H from x times 0 1 y which restricts to little h and restricts to f at, at time zero so um, so here's x it's the interval union e I'm going to multiply that whole thing with an interval All right so this is x times zero one and I want this homotopy H on that whole space. And it's got to restrict the right thing on the bottom, it's got to restrict the right thing on the square at the back. So on the square at the back, it's got to be H, little h. And on, along the bottom, it's got to be F. That's what the homotopy extension property is. And actually, I already know how to define H on the whole of this um, left-hand space, because I know it's little h on that back square, and I know it's F on that blue line there. So the only bits I don't know how to define it are on this, this region here that I've attached. So in other words, on sort of E times 0, 1. I need to extend my map little h to this E times 0, 1. So to do that, I use the previous lemma, and I notice that this red thing I'm drawing here is the same as the red thing in the previous lemma in other words, this was e times 0, 1, and this is the boundary of e times 0, 1, and e at time 0. That's what I'm drawing here. And if I look at that red red set, that's already in the domain of the homotopy over here. So these two guys are in the domain of h, and this one's in the domain of f. So I know how to define big H on that red set, and all I need to do is use the previous lemma to map all the points of uh, E times 0, 1 continuously onto that red set and then use the homotopy that I've already got. So that's the proof. Let me write it down. Um, so to uh, construct H on E times 0, 1 use the map from the previous lemma to get to the boundary of E times 0, 1 union E times 0 um, and then this is in the domain of well, either H or F 
so we use those functions. To define capital H. So capital H is the composition of this map that crushes everything to the red set and then uses H, that, you know, composes that with H or F depending on where you, whereabouts you land. Okay, so if X is obtained from A by attaching one K cell, then you have the homotopy extension property. The theorem says if X is obtained from A by attaching some number of cells, then it has the homotopy extension property, and this now just follows by induction. So the theorem. follows by induction. So as, as an application of this, because this has been pretty uh, theoretical so far, I want to prove a nice fact, which is any uh, connected one-dimensional cell complex. is homotopy equivalent to a wedge of circles. And a wedge of circles is something like this. You take a point, you attach one cell whose boundaries all map to that one point. So it's just a bunch of circles all meeting at exactly one point. And there could be infinitely many of these. It could be an infinite wedge of circles. proof, all I need to do is to find a contractible subcomplex um, which passes through all the zero cells. Because then the theorem implies that if I should, I should give these things names, the subcomplex is going to be called A, the cell complex is going to be called X. So the theorem tells us that XA has the homotopy extension property, and the result from last time tells us that if you have the homotopy extension property, then X is homotopy equivalent to X over A, and X over A now only has one zero cell, right? It can contract all the other ones down to a single point. So this is a wedge of circles. So how do I find a contractible subcomplex that passes through all the zero cells? Well the idea to find this is you put an order or a partial order on the set of all contractible subcomplexes by inclusion. In other words, you know, you've got the set of all possible contractible subcomplexes. Uh, you let's say A one, A two, A three, and maybe A two contains A one. Maybe A three also contains A one. So l let me draw a, a picture. Right, here's a one-dimensional cell complex. Here's a contractible subcomplex. Maybe A one. Maybe A two is this green thing. And maybe A3 is this blue thing. So they both contain A1. So you have this kind of what's called a poset structure, a partial order on the set of all contractible subcomplexes. Um, and um, we want a maximal one.
with respect to this partial order. Right, so the biggest possible guy, I claim, is a, a contractible subcomplex. which is maximal, it's not contained in any bigger one, must contain all the zero cells because otherwise we could just add an edge to it. without changing the fact that it was contractible so that the other end of that edge was this zero cell that we missed. So you can always expand your tree right in, in, in this picture if, if you've got this subcomplex and you've missed out this point here you can just add in that edge. It's still contractible and now it contains one more zero cell. So if you can find a maximal one, that's got all the zero cells. And now I appeal to something called Zorn's Lemma, which has got to be one of my favourite names of a mathematical theorem. So Zorn's Lemma says there is a maximal element in any partially ordered set. And, well, this lemma is equivalent to something called the axiom of choice, which is the kind of thing where it's a, it's a piece of set theory that allows you to make infinitely many choices at the same time. It's the kind of thing you could never implement on a computer, right? So if you, if you were really trying to pick a contractible subcomplex, You'd start adding edges, and at each point you'd have to pick which edge to add to get to the other zero cells. So you have to make infinitely many choices, and there's no algorithmic way of doing that in general. So you need to appeal to this, what's called non-constructive fact, that there just happens to exist a maximal element in any partially ordered set. So this is just an assumption. You should think of this as an assumption of mathematics, it's an axiom. Um, I'm not going to prove it because you, you should really think of it as an axiom. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to go into this now, um, but given Zorn's lemma, you find a maximal uh, contractible subcomplex that contains all the zero cells from what I just said here, and that means if you crush that to a point you get a wedge of circles. So all of the one-dimensional connected cell complexes are homotopy equivalent to a wedge of circles.